Hey, welcome everyone. With the release of the 1.1 update, we're almost at the two year mark into the release of Armor Reforger come May. And in that time, we have seen some really slow but steady progress of not only features, but dramatic stability improvements since the early days of getting disconnected every 10 minutes. Now, in 2024, Armor Reforger releases its first major update since 1.0 came out in October. While the features in this update appear to be a little light, the implications to how gameplay is evolving is continuing to make leaps towards a very positive direction, as many pet peeves and opportunities for trolling get addressed. First up, we have new weapons and gear that have just been added, which are the UK 59L machine gun for the FIA, fully auto M16A2 carbine for the United States, NSV heavy machine gun for the Soviets, and AK-74N and RPK-N for the Soviets, which is basically the same as the regular variants, but it allows for scope attachments. Speaking of scopes, the United States gets a carry handle red dot sight for the M16A2 and carbine, and the Soviets get the 1P29 scope for the AK-74 and RPK, plus the PGO 7V3 scope for the RPG launcher. The Soviets also come with more camo options for their uniforms, which are the KLMK and Berezka pattern, which kind of look like pajamas if you ask me. What's your last words before you get executed? <laughs> or committing a war crime? I'm gonna post oh. this all over Twitter, you're committing a war crime. Yeah, let them all know we're in our pajamas while we do it, too. <laughs> in addition to gear for the United States and Soviet factions, civilians are getting some love in the 1.1 update, too, with the introduction of civilian clothes and vehicles, which are the S-1203 van and the S-105 car. While there doesn't appear to be a civilian faction yet, this does appear to pave the way for one in the hopefully near future. Now with all these new weapons and gear additions, the 1.1 update also gives you something to do with them by introducing a brand new single player and co-op scenario called Combat Ops Everon. In this scenario, you take the role of an FIA guerrilla fighter and fight against the Soviet army across Everon. Combat Ops Everon also contains some important improvements to the scenario framework, which adds more dynamic elements and tasks to the world intended for scenario creators to experiment with in the workbench. If you haven't seen it already, check out my previous video on Combat Ops Everon for more info. If this is the first time you're booting up 1.1, then you might have noticed something has changed a little bit with the visuals. And no, your eyes aren't deceiving you. This update has had more work done to the lighting engine, which brings more contrast and dynamic range to the environment, mixing harsh light with soft light. Frankly, the way the lighting changes when clouds roll by, highlighting certain areas, looks absolutely stunning. Nights have gotten a bit darker too, bringing back the need to use flashlights more often. So how about them flares, Bohemia? Speaking of some visual changes, you might also have noticed that the M16 and the AK-74 iron sights have been remodeled. The building preview for services also has a much better looking design that's a bit more transparent. Icons that used to lag when opening up the inventory screen now appear to load in immediately too. And there's a new UI for requesting vehicles at services which allow you to place down the vehicles anywhere that there's actually room for them. The military markers have a new UI as well, which to be honest I thought that the radial wheel was a much faster way to place down the markers. But it offers much more customization for the markers you do place down. Also, using the inventory screen to apply bandages and other medical supplies has seen a change as well, as now tapping the interaction key equips the item, and holding the interaction key will use the item. And finally, there's notification that you can place down a spawn point while wearing a backpack, making it much more obvious that it's in an available range. The world and environment have seen some improvements in 1.1 as well, with the FIA speaking their own Czech language now, instead of the English that we're all used to, and the concrete vehicle ramps now have the ability to fully repair vehicles. Speaking of vehicles, every vehicle now carries a wrench and a gas can, sort of like an emergency roadside kit. For those of us that need to find our deployed radios to take them down when they run out of tickets, the distance in which you can hear them has been significantly increased. Also, when it comes to radios, you can hear reinforcements coming to your position over the radio on dead soldiers in Combat Ops Everon. 
Next, they've added the first iteration of simple rebinding for your controller, so now you should be able to rearrange some keys to your liking. But unfortunately, I'm still not able to map vehicle accelerate and decelerate to the left stick, which is how I'd be able to use my Tartarus Pro for both infantry and driving. And finally, if you've enjoyed mountain goading straight up a cliff with Shift W, then your dreams of being a main character are going to be dashed because player movement, speed, and stamina consumption is now influenced by the slope of the surface you're moving against. The big hero of this update is undoubtedly the improvements to AI. Bohemia Interactive has sought to bridge the gap between AI and player behavior by giving the AI the ability to dynamically determine points of cover, which they will prioritize once an engagement begins. In 1.1, the AI have become really fast to react, and I've seen them pre-fire when coming around corners, as well as strafe spamming me when dangerously close to each other, almost indistinguishable between a real player. Now, when under threat and needing to heal, the AI will throw smoke to cover their positions and lay down suppressive fire at your last known location, while other elements move around for a flank. And to top it all off, they appear to have regained their accuracy with their RPGs, so you'll want to approach these guys with extreme caution. Driving into a supply depot during the night around the time the FIA would be respawning back in was the first time I thought to myself that I might not be able to make it out of there alive. At least that's how it works with the FIA. I'm really not sure what's going on with the AI for the Soviet and United States forces at our bases as they appear to be still, you know, uh, challenged. The fact that they're designing the AI from the ground up to be able to make these kind of decisions about like using smoke offensively or defensively at this early stage is very exciting for Arm 4. Finally, the very beginnings of AI commanding seem to be coming online too, as we can now determine areas for the AI to defend inside of bases, and more on that later. The supply system has seen some improvements come online too, as we can now decommission vehicles and regain a percentage of their supplies. One major change to the logic behind the supply system is that bases will no longer generate supplies when they're under attack anymore, making it more important to keep them stocked up for defenders. If you enjoy conflict as much as I do, then you'll be happy to see that it continues to evolve and improve in this update as well. One of the biggest changes is that radio backpacks and teleportation work hand in hand with each other now. Infinite waves are no longer able to spawn on radio operators, and backpacks now must be deployed, restricted to your squad, and teleportation can only be done to a deployed radio that has tickets once every 10 minutes. No more fast traveling behind enemy lines if you don't have a radio signal. Once an enemy enters an area, the building screen becomes blurry and you're no longer able to build with it, rendering it useless for the typical exploitation. Heavy vehicle depots can now spawn everything the light vehicle depot can, but it still may be important to have more services to add to the time it takes to capture a base. Speaking of vehicles, they now spawn in with an almost empty fuel tank unless you also have a fuel supply service built. And finally, living quarters no longer spawn AI automatically and now require you to purchase them with supplies and place them manually. This is also where you can command each group to defend a certain location within your base. As mentioned earlier, the 1.1 update also fixes some pet peeve bugs of mine that I actually mentioned in one of my previous videos. Notably, the moving around of map markers and the changing of your movement speed when scrolling through the quick select menu. Also, a huge bug that I bet a lot of people didn't even realize was that vehicle traction was misconfigured, which made vehicles feel a little bit sluggish and unresponsive, particularly when driving up hills. That's been fixed in this update, and everything from the small Jeep to the large transport trucks feel much better to drive. Finally, loadouts weren't being saved properly. So when you experienced a disconnection or a crash, you would have to redo your loadout even though it restored your character with your items. And that's been fixed too. So at the end of the day, this is a total W of an update. But if AI improvements making single player scenarios more challenging doesn't sound good to you, or you're just not that interested in fighting against real opponents in PvP, then unfortunately this update may not be enough to draw you in. With that said, there are still many more things to come to Reforger, so much so that I doubt we will enter a serious development stage of Arma 4 until at least the end of the year, but that's just my own speculation. Because we've still yet to see AI commanding and AI driving, destructible environments, the electrical grid system, helicopters with weapons, 
mortars, and the list goes on. Like, we still have suppressors and bayonets to get. In fact, if you want to get a refresher on all the major features coming to Reforger and their impact on gameplay, then watch this video next. This is Ironbeard, and I'll see you on the battlefield.